Hey everyone, it's Pat Keegan and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. Um, we're going to embark now on the journey of creating this Lazy Susan cabinet as it's the next in the series. So I just wanted to point out something with respect to the overall kitchen design. Initially here in this corner where the Lazy Susan is going to go, we had another bank of four drawers and at the last minute we decided to make a design change because of the size of this door and the amount of space that was behind it um, and how much we would probably lose if we went ahead and implemented it that way. So we didn't want to do that and we opted to put a Lazy Susan in this corner um, which was there originally but now we're going to make ours a little bit bigger. And the other thing I would point out is uh, the dimensions for this side is a little bit longer than the dimensions for this side of the Lazy Susan and and that's partially by design. We have to put the sink where we need to put the sink and we need a little bit of counter space left over here. So normally the Lazy Susan doors are created in a way that uh, these two doors are equal. And so what we're going to be doing is actually making this left door slightly larger than the right door. There's going to be a bifold hinge that's concealed in this corner and the two doors will open like a bifold door, like a reverse bifold door, and you'll be able to get at the Lazy Susan. Now, I could have made the Lazy Susan symmetrical and made the left door equal to the right door, and I would have had about a six inch space here to try to fill with something, and given the size of our face frames, it would have left me with about a two inch opening, and that's a pain to work in. I know there are very cool things like uh, pull out spice racks and pull out knife drawers and um, or a little open door that you can put your baking sheets into and things like that. But just given the amount of overhead in creating that cabinet for the amount of space that it's going to give you, we just opted to include that space into the Lazy Susan. And that's kind of the cool thing about custom work is, you know, for not really much more money or for even less money than making two different cabinets, you know, you can get a, a custom cabinet built the way exactly the way you want to. So let me flip over here to the Lazy Susan cabinet because I wanted to point out a couple of things. As usual, I'm trying to lead each new cabinet segment off with a little bit of discussion on the design. I've said this before and it, it warrants saying again is I believe that if you can keep the overall construction plan in your head, it definitely helps you make better decisions down the road when you run into problems and you always kind of run into problems. I've almost never had a, a job go exactly how I want it. It's very rare. But that's kind of the fun part of it too. I look at those things as opportunities to learn. So anyway, you can see here that the longer side of the Lazy Susan cabinet, we're going to be absorbing that six inches as I mentioned. I don't know that I'll actually put another wall here. I might just to be able to keep the cookie sheets from sliding down or whatever is going to go in here. I don't really know. So we might do that. We might not. I'll have to see. But that's an easy, that's an easy fix to, to be able to do. So you can see just like in the overall design, I've got the left side here longer than the right side. What's different about this cabinet is a couple things. The first is the top, obviously. So it's a corner cabinet. And so because it's a corner cabinet, you need to put in some additional stretcher material. It's not going to be sufficient just to have a little stretcher here and a little stretcher here as was done in the other left base cabinet and as what will be done in the sink base cabinet that you'll see in the next series of videos for the sink base when we finish the overall kitchen. And so I just opt to put the panel here fully inset into the cabinet. It's a little bit more wood. I know it's probably a waste but, but uh, again it gives me um, definitely squares up the cabinet really nicely. It gives me a solid top to anchor whatever I want to anchor to it, namely this post here um, that's going to be the post for holding the Lazy Susan turntables. And so that's kind of what I opt to do usually when I make these types of cabinets. The other thing I would point out is that we're going to be just adding a little bit of base blocker at the bottom, a little bit of blocking for the base at the bottom here. And what's this is really serving two purposes. One, and kind of the lesser purpose in a cabinet that's that's this small, I'll say, I guess it's not that big, but the first purpose is that it does provide some support for 
you know the weight that might be inside of this cabinet that the lazy susan isn't going to sag or something like that or the weight that's on the lazy susan isn't going to cause the bottom to bow out so it does provide a little bit of support but it but mostly why we put this in is for toe kick backing and so i'll be able to come back later and nail in whatever kind of toe kick uh, is going to go in this space whether it's a cherry or a black or i'm not really sure at this point so um but anyway, other than that, it, it, it looks complex, and I know, you know, I'm really trying to appeal to the, to the novice cabinet maker who wants to try something a little bit more aggressive. Um, you'll see in the actual build video, all the complex projects that we do really just need to be understood and broken down into their various steps. And once you can do that, you know, time and time again, that's just going to help you. And so we're going to break this down into its pieces. Um, it's got the same depth and height and notching for the toe kicks as the other cabinet you saw us build. Um, if you watch the left base cabinet build. So, you know, there are a few more tricky things to do it, but I guarantee once you watch the video um, of how we put the face frame together and how we put the box together, that you're gonna be able to do this just fine if you can uh, you know have a little bit of patience with yourself and and make sure that you just break everything down into its and into its basic pieces and then it, it becomes a lot easier to understand and put together so it's definitely something you can tackle and I'm gonna go ahead and post this video and then I'll start posting the videos on the actual cabinet build so I look forward to seeing you in the forum and in the in the comment section below to see what you think thanks